What's up guys? Today I'm making some more sheets um, and what actually what I'm gonna do in this video is try to make a belt loop for the first time um, instead of just like a regular flat belt loop what I'm gonna try and do is make something similar to the Spyderco G-Clip um, let me get it out of the bag to show you you know basically basically it's an open loop and you know there is the hook there, it's almost like a reverse J hook in that there, this hook is here so that when your belt slides in, you can't actually pull the loop off because the belt will basically snag up against this J area. Um, personally, the G clip is one of my more favored belt loop designs. Um, I've always been a big fan of the uh, tech locks, but the problem with the tech locks is that they're relatively expensive for what they are like. I mean, I guess you're getting a lot, kind of, because no one really makes anything similar to it. But, you know, generally a tech lock will cost from $10 to $15. Um, I'm pretty sure you can buy these G-Clips straight from Spyderco. It might be like, I think, $8 to $10. Um, including shipping. I'm not 100% sure and I don't think it's something that's listed on their website. It's something that you're actually gonna have to call customer service and order. Um, I got this when I had a custom sheath made for my Spider Coast Swick, uh, it's the Spirit Run. But yeah, generally when I'm you know working with Kydex I'll have spare material like this um, and it's really too small to do anything with any kind of knives. Um, and what, it, what I saved them for is basically to try and do belt loops. You know, I have one that's not as wide as this in the oven right now heating up. Uh, it shouldn't take all that long to heat up. And the thing about making something like this has always been a lack of a template for me, you know. I thought about using like one of my Zippos, but the thing is it'll just kind of create, you know, a, a belt loop with an opening that's like way too wide. But what I realized was, you know, I have this, it's an SD card holder. Uh, I am a little concerned about putting hot Kydex onto this just because, you know, since it's going to be relatively hot um, and this is low density um, poly plastic, I'm not sure, sure if this will melt or not. But, you know, I'm just going to do it on video and see how, how well it works, how well it works out. Um, I know some people use like piece, small pieces of wood to use as like a template. Uh, I've kind of been lazy to go make it myself and I haven't gone to the hardware store since so you know, maybe next time I go I'll check to see if they have like some sort of like wood shingles that I can cut down the size or something. Uh, all right. So that's what I'm going to do is try it this way. I want the flat end that's going to be next to the sheath on a flat surface like the table. So I'm just gonna wrap the hook end around here first. Have it sit flat on the table, like so. And then just kinda roll it over. Uh, whoops. I can already tell this isn't gonna work out all that well. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna hold it. I currently have um my Boker edit in the press right now so can't really use that so it's, this heat's probably not great for the stable surface but you know whatever ah oh, okay well there we go see like I kind of what happened was I made the um the loop the hook part way too long um that's the problem with working on something that's the problem with working on something like this um, without proper templates is that it's hard to maneuver everything like especially since it's a hot piece of kydex and you have to hold on to it for an extended period of times you really want gloves on and what happens is that kind of ruins your finger dexterity and it's hard to work around things um, and ideally I'd much prefer to use a thinner kydex material you know I have 0.06 inch kydex that I got from uh, knife kits uh, this is 0.08 because this is what I use to make most, most of my sheaths and the thing is you want a thicker kydex just because you want the belt loop to be somewhat rigid but at the same time it's also harder to work with because it is thicker. I'm not really sure how Spyderco gets the G-Clip like this. Obviously they have machines and a assembly line to get this nice and perfect. Um, one of the big things that 
was really puzzling me with this was that the hook and the back plate, you know, that space there to get it to like bend over. You know, what I thought about getting was getting a piece of wood and then milling a groove into it for that hook and then just wrapping it around it so that the backing will actually sit flat up against the hook. But I haven't had a chance to do that. All right. For a small piece of Kydex like this in a hot oven, it doesn't take all that much time to actually heat back up. So we'll try this again. And you know what the thing is, like I think this piece of Kydex I have isn't quite big enough for what I want to do, unfortunately. But yeah, that's what happens when you use scrap. It's already cooling off and becoming less flexible. Yeah, the same thing happened. Well, I'm not gonna really waste too much more video time. I'm gonna pause it for now and I'll edit in another clip of when I actually get it to work. And I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, I have some clip mates, three of them. Uh, you know, these two were relatively the same width. And then from my sheath for the Leatherman I'm making, I had a little extra material left over. So you see I made it, what is that, like quarter of an inch thinner. Um, fin finish isn't perfect, obviously. Um, just because, you know, the pieces of spare material wasn't exactly completely squared off. Um, but, you know, they're pretty good. The back is relatively flat. Uh, you can see here, you know, I have a good amount of tension there so that, you know, it'll stay up against the backing. The hook will stay up against the backing. Um, I haven't drilled the holes yet. You know, what I plan to do is do a square configuration with four holes so you can mount sheets horizontally or vertically on the belt. Um, unfortunately, the spacing for the mounting is not going to be that far apart. But whatever, first time. Next time I think I'll, you know, since this was the first try, I didn't really spend a lot of time and effort into like polishing off the edges of the Kydex. Um, and you know, obviously once I get here, I can't really sand down the hook parts anymore, but honestly, it's not a big deal. You, you know, most of the time it's gonna be next next to your pants and you're not, it's not gonna touch your skin, so it won't really irritate you. Um, on this end here, I'll probably just round off these corners and sand it down so it's not as sharp. And yeah. Next part, I will just, you know, get the holes drilled out and actually mount one of these onto the sheath for the Leatherman that I'm making for my coworker. Alright, I have the uh, sheath finished for the multi-tool, along with the clip. You know, it's nice and wide. Um, I actually screwed up before when I uh, made that hook. The hook actually extended a little too far out, and what happened was that it wouldn't even fit my belt. And my belt thickness is only, I believe, an inch, inch and a quarter. Um, definitely won't even fit a gun belt. So what I ended up doing was just kind of stretching it out, jamming something underneath there, and then going with a Dremel. I don't know if you see it, but I went in with a Dremel, Dremel and uh, cut it out with a rotary, ugh, rotary wheel. Um, I also spaced out six holes. Uh, it's the same on both sides. So, you know, this can get mounted either horizontally or vertically, um, either left or right side. Unfortunately, what happened was I didn't have a drill bit that was larger than this quarter inch one. Um, for, these, for these holes on this side for the Chicago screws, I actually used the drill bit size one under the quarter inch I had. I don't remember exactly what it was. Um, ideally, I'd want to go much larger here just because uh, the Chicago screws are you know, they're both this diameter on both sides, so this can't really actually fit through here. You kind of have to like slide it in stuff. Um, what I really wanted to do is actually have the other side, the uh, the slotted side to be on the inside, and then you could just go in through a screwdriver through the top and tighten it. That way it looks clean on the outside. You don't see these slots. But you know, for now, until I can get to work and borrow a larger size drill bit at work, um, it's not a big deal, it works. Um, retention on this is, way too tight oh man I'm kind of doing this uh, sideways um, what happened was I don't know if you you know if you go back to the older um, like earlier back in the vi this video I actually had some plastic pieces that were taped here with um blue painters tape and unfortunately I ripped it off and then I ended up having to remold it because I wasn't happy with how this side came out on the first 
try. Um, and then I didn't, unfortunately, put it back on. So what happens is now these uh, screws are actually getting caught up in the sheath. And it's making it really tough to retain. Um, the whole point of having those channels was that, you know, you have just the whole channel here along the side. And it would allow the screws to go in and out. Um, yeah, I didn't real. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that that was the case until after I had already cut the piece. And yeah, you know, at this point, it's not a big deal. Um, I think what I'll do is I will actually re-put those. I, I use like pieces of a uh, zip tie. I'll tape those back on, and then I'll slide this force back into the sheath, and it's just just run over this front surface with a heat gun. Uh, hopefully, you know it'll kind of open up a little bit, and it should make it easier to put in and out. I mean, it's not like it doesn't go in, and eventually what'll happen is those screws will just start to um, eat away at the inside of the sheath. Um, not the best way of doing it, but it works. Eventually, it'll loosen up. Right now, you know, just on a simple webbing belt, it actually is very tough to get on and off. Um, if I were to put this on a gun belt, it would be much easier because, you know, gun belts are wider and stiffer, but, you know, this is for my coworker and he doesn't have one. He just uses a regular leather belt on a daily basis. So I'll have to fix that up. Ah, oh, shoot. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, um, you know, these are definitely really hard to make. Getting these holes spaced out correctly and like symmetrical were very difficult even now you can see like they're not exactly lined up evenly yeah, i kind of like freehand it so it's to be expected um the f you know back in earlier in the video i actually showed uh, that i made three of these um unfortunately the other one the other larger one i screwed up the spacing on the holes and then they wouldn't actually fit the uh hole spacing on the sheath so you know that one i'm just gonna trash or Maybe the next time I make another sheath, I'll just space out the holes on the sheath for those holes that's on the belt loop. It's not a big deal. Uh, it doesn't have to go to waste or anything. Um, fortunately, I had made more than one. And, you know, actually this, you know, template I was using, the SD card holder, actually held up to the heat quite well. Um, so, I, you know, maybe I'll just use this for now on until I can find something that's better and, you know, maybe something that I can put into the press for more consistency. Anyway, it's a super hot day. I'm sweating like crazy. My shirt is completely drenched, um, you know, especially with the oven on and it being like in the 90s today. So I hope you guys, you know, learn, learn something from this video, learn from my mistakes, and I hope you enjoyed it. And, you know, enjoy the rest of your day.